see the krishna behind me here i mean krishna is all around me but still sarika do you see here yes i see it now <laughs> <laughs> okay let's get started <laughs> oh. ಗಾಯಂತಿ 
ध्यानावस्थितदगते न मनसा पश्यन्ती यम योगिनो यस्यातम् न विदुसुरा सुरगना देवायतस्मै नमः देवायतस्मै नमः देवायतस्मै नमः हरियोम हरियोम Bhagavan has stated categorically, actually, stated categorically that pure thoughts lead to noble actions or are followed by noble actions, and the outcome of these is high. Selfish thoughts are followed by self-centric actions, and the outcome of this is mediocre. And impure thoughts are followed by ignoble actions, and the outcome of that is low. <clears throat> They take you high. medium let you be in mediocre or take you low at the same time it's been clearly taught to us by bhagwan that the gunas are the source of all thoughts so the very source is the gunas and all types of gunas are not only unavoidable but they are actually necessary for us to be able to be alive and also to add some value to our cells and our environment so how does one get freedom from gunas that lead to liberation so bhagwan said that while it is not possible to get freedom from the direct bondage of the gunas which they are there and our nature is part of the gunas so it's impossible to get freedom from direct bondage it is possible to get freedom from the indirect bondage caused by the gunas and this is nothing but identification with that bondage that freedom from that identification is jeevan mukti that freedom from the identification of i am doing i am the karta or i am making a mistake or i made a mistake or i am happy either of these is freedom from the gunas themselves and that freedom ultimately leads to the freedom from the sense of individuality freedom from the sense of i which then leads to identification with the brahman and that is jeevan mukti liberation while living when one can see that other than the gunas there is nothing else which causes whatever is happening whatever is there there is no other doer other than the gunas and one who rises above the gunas and knows what the real brahman the real self the real atman is that knowledge such a person bhagwan says attains my nature bhagwan's nature a nature that his his nature the true nirguna nature and for the one to take a step back who adheres to tamas lethargy and sleep are always welcome the person who is caught in rajas is always up and doing something something or the other is going on all the time and the one who is immersed in sattva has certain high quality intellectual and emotional pursuits that have been identified by that person but all these three kind of people are very much bounded by those three different types of pursuits that are driven by gunas so we can identify them fairly easily you know and arjuna obviously now has reached a stage that he can identify people who have tamasic nature people who have rajasic nature and people who have sattvic nature easily and we should also learn if we have not yet learned not only that we have most of us i'm sure all of us have already learned but we miss it during the course of day to day action with ourselves and with others we don't realize what nature we are going through or what nature we are exhibiting that realization doesn't happen it just happens and maybe a little later after all the action has happened then we realize oh today morning i was very lethargic so i did not do my workout i have been very rajasic so i have been expressive of my feelings and emotions and creating a tumultuous tumultuous environment around me or i have been you know pursuing my reading and intellectual pursuit and devotion and bhajans and so on and either reading or pursuing bhajans and all of that and i know that i have been doing that for the last few hours but while going through our day to day experiences 
while going through if we know who we are what we are and if we know what who others are what others are it will help us conduct our lives much better and now arjuna having understood this and realizing that he is able to recognize at the moment now asks the question that how do i recognize people who have gone beyond the gunas okay i understand you know who are the people who are undergoing various gunas or what am i going through but who are these how do i what is the conduct of this person how do i know that such and such a person or even myself is beyond the gunas liberated from the gunas and how does one actually get this liberation how does one go beyond how does one transcend the gunas that is his question actually three questions right the first one is how does one recognize such a person the second one is what is the conduct of the person and the third one is how does this person who has actually transcended gunas done or achieved that aspect and bhagwan now answers the first question in verse 22 shri bhagwan uvacha shri bhagwan uvacha prakasham cha pravrittim cha prakasham cha pravrittim cha mohameva cha pandava mohameva cha pandava nadveshti sampravrittani nadveshti sampravrittani nanivartani kankshati nanivrittani kankshati द्वेष्टि or dveshtina hates not what prakasham light cha and pravrittim activity cha and moham delusion one who does not hate all of this when they are present sam pravrittani when they are present and na kankshati does not long for them when they are absent nivrittani so the blessed lord said o pandava one who hates not light activity and delusion when present and not longs for them when absent so using a representative quality for a larger aspect in sanskrit is called upalakshanam so bhagwan is doing that here like for example we can say we can use the term vastness for space in um, astronomy or uh, in uh, you know universal exploration when you say vast it's typically understood that you are referring to space similarly prakasham is the expression for sattva pravrittim is the expression for rajas and moham for delusion is the expression for tamas and bhagwan says na dveshti sampravrittani does not hate any of these when they are in full expression so the person realizes that they are in full expression so remember we learned and we talked about the three gunas are in constant logger heads with each other and one of them is subjugating the others to express itself fully so when any of this in this kind of full expression at that time nadveshti does not hate and when they are not there when one of them is expressing the other two are not there right they are not they are subjugated they are subordinated at that time na nivrittani kankshati does not long for them when they are not there so this brahmagyani who has gone beyond the gunas you can say is like a mirror a mirror reflects whatever is placed in front of it if nothing is placed in front of it the mirror is just there so what you see is what you get so the place of the three gunas sattva rajas and tamas are similar in the mind of a person who 
is a muni, a person who has gone beyond the three gunas. If they are there, the person understands that they are there, is okay with they being there. And if they are not there, the person is not hankering for them. So such a person is how you recognize. Like what we said earlier, Padma Patram Ivambasa, like a lotus petal which is in the water, water is on top of it, it is surrounded by water and sometimes the petal is, there is no water. For example, when you pluck it and bring it home, there is no water. But the lotus petal is the way it is. So as long as the person lives, this person is like a true reflection. If something is there, it's fine. If something is not there, it's fine. Something is there, okay. Something is not there, okay. And this person is not impacted by the gunas. Just like the lotus flower is not impacted by the water that is on top of it. Untouched by them while being in contact with them. So essentially Bhagavan is saying, whether they are there or whether they are not there, the person does not hate and the person does not hanker or long for them. And now coming to Arjuna's uh, second question, what is this person's conduct? Bhagwan answers this question in the next three verses. So we will go to verse 23. <coughs> Gunayuna vichalyate. Gunayuna vichalyate. Guna vartanta ityva. Guna vartanta ityva. Yovatishtati ningate. Yovatishtati ningate. Udasina vadasina. Gunayuna vichalyate. Guna vartanta ityeva yovadishtati ningate. <coughs> Yaha, one who <coughs> asinaha is seated, established. Vada, like udasinaha, one unconcerned. One who is seated or established like one, like one unconcerned. Na, not. Vichalyate shaken gunaihi by the gunas. Yaha who ityeva thus knowing how the ityeva thus knowing what guna vartante how the gunas operate knowing how the gunas operate vatishtati is firmly placed Nengate and moves not. So one who is established like one unconcerned is not shaken or moved by the gunas who knowing how the gunas operate is firm and moves not. So like a tree, you know, while a tree sways when there is a wind or wind blows, but the peaks in the mountain remain firm when turbulent clouds, you know, kind of crash into them. Or the lighthouse in the ocean just stands still even as the waves beat into it. Similarly, the gunas play with or play around the Brahmagyani, who remains firm, unmoved, unconcerned, as if unconcerned. I should change this. I've written unconcerned here. He's not unconcerned, as if Bhagwan is very careful in using, you know, the words that he uses, as if unconcerned with them, yet performing all the duties that are necessary. So the choice of the words used by Bhagwan is very clear. Like one who is unconcerned. This person is not indifferent to what is around him or around her. This person does not exist, just being there without, oh, I am above the gunas, so I'm just there like a mirror without making contributions. No, the person proactively makes contributions. In that sense, not like a mirror really. Right? This only means that while the person experiences the play of the gunas, whatever the gunas are doing, the person also plays the role that the person is meant to play as per his dharma or as per her dharma. 
and performs all duties. But while performing all the duties and as the gunas are playing their games in and around this person, the person is unmoved, unshaken. Just as a person appears to be unconcerned or is actually unconcerned. This person appears to be unconcerned. It's like, you know, a lot of people have dreams. All of us have dreams. Okay. And a lot of people identify with the dream. Like it, it's so real. It's so absolutely actual, you know. But in reality, the dream is nothing but a falsity, right? Similarly, the Brahma understands that the play of the gunas, however real they may seem, is actually false. And Bhagavan continues, and we'll do the next two verses together. Tamadukha Sukha Swastaha Tamadukha Kanchanaha Tamaloshtashma Kanchanaha Tulya Priya Priyo Dhiraha Tulya Priya Priyo Dhiraha Tulya Nindatma Samstutihi Tulya Nindatma Samstutihi Mana Pamana Yos Tulyaha Mana Pamana Yos Tulyaha Tulyo Mitra Ripakshayo Ho Tulyo Mitra Ripakshayo Ho Sarva Ramba Parityagi Sarva Ramba Parityagi Gunati Tasa Uchyate Gunati Tasa Uchyate Samadukha Sukha Swastaha Samaloshtashma Kanchanaha Tulya Priya Priyo Dhiraha Tulya Nindatma Samstutihi Mana Pamana Yos Tulyaha Tulyo Mitra Ripakshayo Ho Sarva Ramba Parityagi Munati Tasa Uchyate So before I go there, you know, I forgot to recite this example or relate this example. So my daughter today is not with me. She's attending some um, uh, concert with her friends. And, uh, you know, I was telling her the concert is, you know, going to be very largistic and satsang is going to be very sattvic. Why don't you attend satsang, you know? And she was like, no, I know that I'm in Rajas and I'll be there. <laughs> so, you know, that's how the uh, Gunatita is. Knowing fully aware when Rajas is there, understands is and when Sattva is there understands is so yeah, that's the thought that came to me uh, so they have this uh, um, called something called Boston Live or something like that anyway so Bhagwan says <laughs> Swastaha established in the self Sama alike Dukha Sukha in pain and in pleasure Sama considering the same Loshtashma Kanchanaha, a clod of earth, stone, or gold. Priya Priyo, the dear and the not dear. Tulyaha, the same. Tulyaha, the same. Nindatma Samstutihi, in censure and in praise. Dhiraha, firm. Established in the self, alike in pleasure and pain. To whom a clod of earth, a stone or gold are the same. To whom the dear and the not dear are the same. The same in censure and in praise. One who is firm. And continuing, Tulyaha the same. Manapa mana yoho, in honor and in dishonor. Tulyaha the same. Mitrari paksha yoho, to friends and to foes. Parityagi, abandoning. Sarvarambha, all undertakings. Uchyate is said, or saha, this person, Uchyate is said, gunatitaha, to have crossed beyond the gunas. The same in honor and dishonor, the same to friends and foes alike, abandoning all undertakings, this person is said to have crossed beyond the gunas. The gunas have assumed the form of all elements in creation. Everything around us, 
is the expression of prakriti and the expression happens through gunas including the human body mind and intellect that also and we also saw that the gunas are constantly interacting with each other which means all elements of creation are constantly interacting with each other human beings are constantly interacting with each other why because the gunas are constantly interacting if they were not interacting human beings would not interact with each other. and even if they are not interacting it is because tamas is acting that is why they are not interacting however the self the atman is not a party to any of these interactions and the one who identifies not with the gunas but with the atman having crossed beyond the gunas having become that gunatita that's why not interacting with the gunas or not understanding what's i'm sorry understanding what's happening in the play of the gunas exhibits the same behavior in all interactions so arjuna asked what is the conduct the conduct of this person while doing the duty having understood and having crossed beyond the gunas identifying with the atman which is not interacting with the gunas the conduct of this person is same across all of these in the midst of all the change and fluctuations in the midst of all the tumultuous things that are going on this person behaves and handles all this in a balanced manner with equanimity whether it is personal or whether it is general societal whatever is going on the thrills of sattva you know the the super happiness that you so even a sattvic person who identifies with sattva feels the happiness expresses the happiness and says i did this good task right but the person who does not identify with sattva is beyond it same with the uproars of rajas or the weariness of tamas whatever the nature may be all of these come and go but this person exhibits the same self composed conduct or behavior and bhagwan says swastaha swastaha why because this person is established in the self swastaha means established in the self constantly aware of the supreme wisdom and experiencing that divinity within that divinity we spoke about in the first first satsa every creation has every element of creation has divinity within it's a question of unveiling the divinity and once you have unveiled experiencing that established in that divinity the upheavals of the samsaric life at the level of the body mind and intellect they are mere transactions for this gunati they do not impact the conduct of this person the person experiences them but do not impact the conduct of this person and some examples that bhagwan gives to explain this point <clears throat> and he chooses examples which are the main conditions of our day to day they are he says sama dukha sukha alike in pleasure and in pain sukha dukha or dukha sukha whichever we see it this person you know is always coming in contact with the world like everyone else we all come in contact in the world with the world right whether we are judging this contact as pleasure or sukha or we are judging this contact as dukha or pain is entirely a function of our gunas the sun for example is shining brightly on everyone equally without any disparity right but whether we perceive the sun as unbearably hot or whether we perceive the sun as pleasantly warm is entirely dependent on our guna so a person living in chennai for example or in delhi in the middle of summer they are used to they get habituated the gunas are adjusting and get habituated so they perceive it as pleasantly warm but someone who goes from a cold climate to that hot climate is finding the same sun unbearably hot so it is essentially the play of the guna that makes us perceive sukha or dukha sama loshta kanchanah the universe and all of this by the way bhagwan has talked about earlier in chapter 2 chapter 6 we have gone through each of these he is picking and choosing and presenting them again from the perspective of gunas see in the beginning of this chapter bhagwan had said 
I am going to repeat to you the supreme knowledge that I have already conveyed to you in different context. Please relate all of that. So we need to relate all of that. So sama noshtashma kanchana, whether it is a clod of earth or whether it is stone, the stone could be just an ordinary rock, piece of rock, or it could be precious stone or gold. The universe is created out of all these elements. And the human being distinguishes between them based on our gunas, the human being's gunas. And based on our gunas, we have attached tradeworthiness to them. So something that is rare, like a precious stone or gold is very valuable. But something that is so valuable, actually, like this clod of earth or this entire earth put together, that is invaluable. We can destroy it systematically. So we have attached that value, even if it is wrong value. Over a period of time, human beings realize that it is wrong value. But an episode passes, something like Corona goes away, we are back into our old behavior. Right? So this trade-worthiness, this preciousness that is established for the elements of creation is based on the gunas again. And also differs based on situation. Gold will be very valuable and then gold will be very invaluable depending on the price of the gold, the value that we have attached to it. So it also depends on the situation. I would not keep a stone, pick it up from the you know park and keep it in my locker. But I will go to extreme extent to protect my precious stones and gold and investment and so on and so forth. For a person of wisdom, all of this hold the same value. He does not differentiate between any of them. Just like a child who has outgrown her toys, you know, whether it is, uh, you know, uh, feathers or broken bangles or, uh, or his toys, like it may be stamps or marbles or whatever it may be, or their toys, all of these. And extremely precious, you know, a small child will take extreme care to protect these small little things. But after a point in time, it's just lying around. There is no special value to those. Similarly, this person who has grown out of gunas, who has become a gunatita, has no value for any of these elements, whether they be loshta, loshta, ashna or kanchana, whatever it may be. And then Bhagavan says, tulya priya priya. The same to one who is dear and one who is not dear. So this is a tough one, right? So dear are those people who we like because they have an agreeable nature with us or with, with whom our nature agrees. So this similarity or this likeness in nature is what influences who is dear and who is not dear. And this comes from what? It comes from Aham and Mama. My nature, I am, this person is dear to me. Not my nature, this person is not dear to me. And that aham and mama aspect is in full play when we are looking at who is likable or lovable and who is not. Whereas this gunatita, who has gone beyond the nature of human beings, that person is fixed in the self. And being fixed in the self sees a similar Atman in all human beings. Again, some people will say same Atman. Some people will say similar Atman. It doesn't matter. Similar or same. Okay. Seems that similarity in everyone. And because of that sees God in everyone. And when you see God in everyone, Tulyaha Priya Priya. Whether it is Priya or Apriya, it's the same Tulya. Tulya nindatma samstutihi. The same in censure and in praise. In extreme criticism and in praise, the person is the same. Person receives praise and understands that it is praise. The person receives censure, understands that it is censure. But the internal equanimity of the person is not altered. Such a person does not feel exhilarated by praise. At the same time, does not feel dejected by censure. Manapa manya tulyaha. The same in honor and dishonor. This is kind of an extension of censure and praise, right? From praise comes 
mana or honor and from censure comes dishonor it could lead to and these are product of ego of this feeling of aham and mama my honor my dishonor without that my there is no honor or dishonor so this person has gone beyond that my this person has gone beyond that i and having discarded the ego the person does not feel any sense of honor and dishonor continue to do their duty irrespective of what the world bestows them with dhiraha the one with wisdom so all this requires that wisdom dhiraha means the one with wisdom one with the capability of not getting swayed by extremities that is dhiraha does not sway like a pendulum remains firm tulyo mitrari pakshayo ho and by being firm like this is the same towards friends and to enemies the same to friend and to foe the person does not even have a friend or a foe in the first place when someone demonstrates friendship or enmity is the same towards that person that is because these aspects of friendship and enmity is for this person are nothing but bhava or expressions of the gunas and one who has gone beyond the gunas is the same amongst all these expressions and bhagwan says sarva rambha parityagi renouncing every undertaking or renouncing all undertakings see undertakings are those which are taken up or actions that are taken up to gain something that is an undertaking with a selfish desire with some kind of a selfish purpose this person it's not as if this person does not initiate action this person does not initiate action with a selfish motive actually we have seen in bhagavad gita also that we foolishly believe that we initiate anything so this person has not only does not initiate anything with a selfish motive this person is gone beyond the concept of doership world is you know going on there is an eternal pattern and we are part of this grand plan the grand scheme of things and the one who has crossed over the gunas realizes this and does not seek agency that i am the doer is not there does not assume having gone beyond the gunas does not assume agency now last satsang i had given the example of um, dr victor frankl so an extreme situation you know in which people could not survive right the holocaust and then the uh, torture and all of that right so let us just go through these examples that bhagwan is talking about with respect to victor frankl when you, when a human being is put in that kind of a situation it is possible the question is how do we learn to do that in normal situations also so bhagwan says swastah established in the self we saw that doctor you know one of his quotes right what you are doing to me you are doing to my body how can you say that because you are established in this what you are doing to me you are not doing to myself the self you are doing to my body so that's why i am not impacted sama dukha sukha so there were times when his body was going through torture there were times when it was not going through torture so when it's not going through torture is sukha but he was the same he was able to go beyond both of those aspects sama loshtashma kanchana ha see obviously dr victor frankl one of the famous neurologists of his time right had the privilege of the best lab laboratories that neuroscientists enjoy but at that point in time he was in a dungeon so whether it is that precious laboratory or whether it is this dungeon whatever it may be whatever place or whatever element that was with him he was the same to that tulya priya priya so there were people who he loved back home there were other prisoners who he were, who he was with along with them in the in the dungeon in this jail who he cared for he, he was actually studying as a psychologist and then there were these perpetuators of torture who obviously he didn't care for too much right but they were the same for him it didn't matter 
Tulya Nindatma Samstuti. The torturers were heaping insults. And the fellow prisoners were trying or not trying, they were actually praising Dr. Frankel because he was able to sustain this better and was also teaching fellow prisoners how to do that. Not only studying them, but also teaching them. So praise from one side, censor from the other side. He was absolutely equal. Same with Mana Pamana. Tiraha, with wisdom, this wisdom he got through this experience and because of which he was able to remain firm. Tulya Mitrari Akshayoho. So Mitra as well as the people, the enemies who were so-called enemies who were meeting out all that torture. And because of all of this, he was able to be Sarvaramba Parityagi not undertake anything for selfish gain. And that was also demonstrated after, you know, everything was over and he became free. And Bhagavan says, Gunatita sa uchyate. Such a person is said to be a Gunatita. Atita crossed over guna, guna, Gunas. So one who has crossed over all the Gunas, one who has gone beyond the Gunas. And how does one transcend the gunas? Bhagavan now provides an answer in the next verse. And this will be our sadhana for this chapter. Verse 26. Mamcha yovya bicharena. Mamcha yovya bicharena. Bhakti yogena sevate. Bhakti yogena sevate. Sagunan samadhi tetan. Sagunan samati tyaitan. Brahma bhuyaya kalpate. Brahma bhuyaya kalpate. Mamcha yogya bicharena. Bhakti yogi na sevate. Sagunan samati tyaitan. Brahma bhuyaya kalpate. Yaha, one who sevate serves. Mam me. Avya bicharena with unswivering. Bhakti yogena, bhakti yoga. Saha, that person, itan is able to samatitya, cross beyond gunan, the gunas. And kalpate is fit. Bhuyaya for the state. Brahma of Brahman. One who serves me with unswivering bhakti yoga, that person is able to cross beyond the gunas and is fit for the state of Brahman. Love towards God is devotion or it's termed as devotion. We have seen that our dominant guna leads to our thoughts and our thoughts impact our actions and that results in high or mediocre or low level of existence per se. Conversely, improving the situation that we are in or in which we exist, forcing ourselves, goading ourselves to perform righteous actions, altering our quality of thoughts, that then can lead to transcending the gunas. If I know that I am lethargic, I don't feel like exercising, forcing myself to get out of the bed, that leads me to rajas. And then when I come back, I feel that sense of calmness. It leads me to sattva. It does seem rather difficult. Actually, it is difficult. But Bhagwan offers a very simple way, devotion, love for God. And remember, God is... And we have seen earlier in the Bhagavad Gita. Nothing but our higher ideal. He is there in our higher ideal. Whatever that higher ideal may be. The higher ideal may be exercise. The higher ideal may be writing an exam. The higher ideal may be, you know, working for my team. Whatever karma yoga. That's why Bhagavan says in chapter 3. Through karma yoga you can realize. Right? Or the higher ideal may be one particular representation of Bhagavan's murti. His avatar. Whatever it may be. Having that higher ideal 
or that higher ideal may be nirguna brahman having that higher ideal being devoted to that higher ideal would certainly with certainty lead to bhagwan himself asamshayam he says shri shankaracharya had said in viveka chudaman you know he said and i quote external attachment is attachment to sense objects <coughs> internal attachment is self identification with the ego and modifications of the mind the dispassionate person absorbingly devoted to brahman is alone able to renounce both unquote and bhagwan says see shankaracharya said absorbingly devoted bhagwan says avya bicharena with no other thought unswervering with 100% conviction placing ourselves in situations that is conducive to that kind of conviction conducive to bhakti yoga performing actions that are conducive to bhakti yoga having thoughts that are conducive to bhakti yoga all of this will definitely help in transcending the gunas and all of the gunas by themselves also so bhagwan says bhakti yogena now bhakti yogena we can go through entire chapter 12 that is bhakti yogena <laughs> right so we will not do that we will not go through chapter 12 once again we will go through see what we had bhagwan had said what are the disciplines required in chapter 12 for bhakti yoga for each form of worship whether it is saguna worship or nirguna worship he had talked about that let's just quickly revise that so bhagwan had said that the disciplines required for saguna worshipers are they do actions for me so performing actions for your higher ideal with me as the supreme with the higher ideal as the supreme devoted to me being devoted to the higher ideal and quickly jumping to nirguna having restrained all the senses is the discipline the three very says in saguna does actions for me with me as the supreme and devoted to me are corresponding to the nirguna worshipper having restraining all the senses because why because when the senses are restrained the actions automatically go for the higher idea the senses are inward towards the inner divinity the focus automatically shifts to that higher ideal and devotion automatically goes on to the higher ideal and then coming back to saguna the next discipline bhagwan laid out was free from or devoid of attachment and in the case of nirguna bhagwan says everywhere even minded sama sukha dukha and so on and so on and so on right loshta kanchana whatever it is without any enmity towards all creatures mitrari whoever it may be and in nirguna he says rejoices in the welfare of all so these are the disciplines that are required for bhakti yoga and bhagwan says in chapter 12 verses 6 and 7 he says he gives an assurance he says ye tu sarvani karmani mai sanyasya matparaha anye naiva yogena maam dhyayanta upasate तेषाम अहं समुद्धर्ता मृत्यु संसार सागरात भवामि न चिरात पार्थ मय्यावेशित चेतसाम सो भगवान सेस बट दोस हु वर्शिप मी रिनाउंसिंग ऑल एक्शंस इन मी विद मी एज द सुप्रीम मेडिटेटिंग ऑन मी विद सिंगल माइंडेड डिवोशन ऑल दिस इज भक्ति योगा वर्शिप मी renouncing all actions in me with me as the supreme meditating on me with single minded devotion all of this is bhakti yoga and bhagwan says for them whose minds are set on me i become the savior i lift them out of the ocean of mortal life without delay o partha and what is this ocean of mortal life gunas right at that time we had not studied gunas but this entire ocean of mortal life is nothing but sattva rajas and tamas out of the so bhagwan comes as a savior for those who are seeped in devotion and lifts them out of the gunas the ocean of gunas he personally makes them gunatita so that's why bhakti is 
our sadhana for this chapter also. And how is that so? Bhagwan says in the last verse of this chapter. Ramhano hi pratishtaham. Ramhano hi pratishtaham. Amritasya vyayasya cha. Amritasya vyayasya cha. Shashvatasya cha dharmasya. Shashvatasya cha dharmasya. Sukhasya ikanti kasya cha. Sukhasya ikanti kasya cha. Brahmano hi pratishtaham. Amritasya vyayasya cha. Shashvatasya cha dharmasya. Sukhasya ikanti kasya cha. So Bhagavan says, how does he, for the one practicing Bhakti Yoga, how does he lift them out? He says, aham, I. How does that happen? Because aham, I. Surely he, Pratishtha, the abode, Brahmano, of Brahman. Amritasya, the immortal. Avyayasya, the immutable. For I am surely the abode of Brahman, the immortal and the immutable, of eternal dharma and of absolute bliss. So what is he saying here? Aham hi pratishta. I am surely the abode of what? Number one, Brahmano, of the Brahman, both Saguna and Nirguna. I am the abode of Saguna Brahman. I am the abode of Nirguna Brahman. Amritasya cha avyayasya of the immortal and the immutable. What is permanent and what does not decay. Shashvatasya cha dharmasya of the eternal dharma. Sanatana dharma. Sukhasya cha ekantikasya of absolute bliss. So Bhagavan says, I am the abode of all of this. So he is saying, Bhagavan Sri Krishna is saying that he himself being the abode of all of this all of which is beyond the gunas Brahman is beyond the guna Amritam or immortality is beyond the guna Avyayasya or immutability is beyond the guna the Sanatana Dharma or the Shashvata Dharma is beyond the guna and the Sukhasya Ekantasya is also beyond the guna absolute bliss Inkantikasya the absolute bliss is also beyond the guna. So being, all of this being my abode, having absolute single-pointed devotion to me will automatically establish you in my abode. That is what Bhagavan is saying. We see that in our day-to-day -day life all the time. So one of my favorite examples, getting up in the morning and going and working out or, you know, I, my aim is to become the best tennis player in the world. That is my higher idea. Whether it is working out or whether it is clearing the examination or whether it is uh, becoming the tennis champion is my higher ideal. And if that is my higher ideal, Bhagwan says I am in that higher ideal. And being in that higher ideal, what happens when you are devoted to it? You automatically get established in that higher ideal. You automatically do things which are aligned to it. You are automatically practice intellectual pursuits that are aligned to it. You automatically refrain from tamasic activities which prevent you from not doing that, pursuing that higher idea. So that is why devotion, being established in devotion. Let's finish with a story, interesting story, I thought. You know, mythology states that Sati married Lord Shiva against her parents' wishes, because of which her father was very angry and he conducted a yajna to which he did not invite Shiva. Now, this story is about how Shiva got his third eye. When Sati went there to protest to her father, why did you not invite my husband? Her father not only you know, was nice to her, but actually insulted Shiva in front of all the guests and insulted badly. Unable to bear all of that, on one side the father, on the other side the love for her husband, Sati immolated herself in the same sacrificial fire that her father was performing, the yajna. 
thereby rendering the sacrifice completely useless and angered by this shiva made elaborate plans to invade sati's father's kingdom and destroy it <coughs> now sati's father's kingdom was guided by three mighty asuras who had citadels of iron the first one of an iron citadel the second one a silver citadel and the third one a golden citadel the iron citadel asura tried to destroy shiva but obviously shiva you know easily destroyed that asura the citadel the iron citadel and also the asura the silver citadel asura tried to entice shiva with offerings of lust and greed he he understood that i cannot destroy if the other asura cannot destroy him i cannot do that so let me try this and shiva ascetic right so he very easily subjugated this asura the golden citadel asura tried to wean away shiva with meditation friendly environment luring the ascetic to meditate and thereby away from his goal but not getting that kind of meditation that he gets in kailasha and having that goal to pursue he was also very easily destroyed the golden citadel asura but even after all this shiva didn't feel the peace or the ultimate peace of what had happened from because of what had happened and that is when it is said that shiva meditated and prayed to narayana and narayana gave him the third eye and with this third eye shiva was able to see very clearly what all the meaning behind all of this was and i attained that quietude of the ascetic again so this story is nothing but a mythological presentation of the transcendence of the gunas so the iron citadel is tamas the um, silver citadel is rajas and the golden citadel is sattva and shiva easily destroyed all of them but the ultimate overcoming of all the gunas happened with devotion even for the mighty shiva lord shiva thus bhagwan once again tells us to now please don't say you know i am saying bhagwan is greater than shiva shiva is greater shiva is bhagwan bhagwan is shiva okay <laughs> so once again bhagwan tells us to catch hold of bhakti and bhakti will guide us that is the message behind all of this even for the mighty shiva it is bhakti that is the message and the bhakti will guide us for what it will guide us to do the right karma and it will also bestow the right jnana and that will then help us transcend the gunas into ultimate liberation thank you hari om shri krishna we uh, complete the chapter om tat saditi om tat saditi shrimad bhagavad gita su श्रीमद भगवद गीता सु उपनिषद सु उपनिषद सु ब्रह्म विद्यायाम ब्रह्म विद्यायाम योग शास्त्रे योग शास्त्रे श्री कृष्ण अर्जुन संवादे श्री कृष्ण अर्जुन संवादे गुणत्रय विभाग योगो नाम गुणत्रय विभाग योगो नाम चतुर्दशोध्याय चतुर्दशोध्याय शेल वी रिसाइड द वर्सेस बिट टाइम ऑलरेडी शेल वी जस्ट या वील जस्ट गो अहेड एंड वील क्विकली डू द साधना रिवाइज द साधना चैप्टर वन वी सेट सीक टू लुक फॉर शोका एंड मोह एंड डिस्ट्रॉय दम रिमूव दम चैप्टर टू समत्व योग उच्यते मेन्टेन इक्विपॉइस इन एक्सट्रीमिटीज चैप्टर थ्री समाचार परफॉर्म एक्शन विथ अटमोस्ट डिवोशन डेडिकेशन एंड परफेक्शन चैप्टर फोर कर्मणि अकर्म पश्चेत नॉट बींग द डूअर वाइल डूइंग बै सीइंग इन एक्शन इन एक्शन प्राक्टिसिंग दैट चैप्टर फाइव पद्म पत्र इवाम भसा जस्ट लाइक अ लोटस पेटल इज अंटच बै वॉटर be untouched by worldly experiences while being in contact with them chapter 
माम पश्यति सर्वत्र सर्वाम च मई पश्यति सीज मी एवरीवेयर एंड सीज एवरीथिंग इन मी वी नीड टू प्रैक्टिस दिस वाइल मेडिटेटिंग चैप्टर सेवन वी हैड टू साधना से न त्वहम तेशु ते मही इंडीड आई एम नॉट इन देम दे आर इन मी मेंटेनिंग अवेयरनेस ऑफ दिस द प्योर कॉन्शियसनेस अनटच्ड इन द मिड्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वेरीड थॉट्स एंड द सेकंड वाज वाज मई सर्वमिदम प्रोत्तम सूत्रे मणि गणायव ऑल द वैरायटी इज स्ट्रंग इन मी जस्ट लाइक जेम्स इन अ स्ट्रिंग चैप्टर 8 सर्वेशु कालेशु मामनुस्मर युद्यच at all times every moment of your life ma manusmara remember me yudhyacha and perform your duties chapter 9 yat karoshi tat kurushva madarpanam whatever you do do that as an offering to me chapter 10 yat yat vibhuti mat satvam mama te tejom shasham bhavam whatever glorious experience that is there in manifestation that is part of my splendor Chapter eleven, nimitta matram bhava. Be an instrument in Bhagwan's hands. Take up the role of being that instrument to carry out His plans. Because anyway, everything is His plans. We are not the agency. And then in chapter eleven, we also had sadhana for the entire Bhagavad Gita. Mat karma krito does actions for me. Mat paramaha with me as the supreme. Mat bhakta ha devoted to me. Sangha varjita, free from or devoid of attachment. Nirvairaha sarva bhuteshu, without any enmity towards all creatures. This is what we just said also, right? Chapter twelve. Par yupasate dharmyam ritam yathoktam. Follow the immortal dharma as declared by Bhagwan Sri Krishna. Chapter thirteen. Kshetra kshetra geyor evam antaram. Vidu, viduhu, know the difference. Discern the difference between the field and the knower of the field, the kshetra and the kshetra kya. Bhuta prakriti moksham. Knowing this is the means of liberation from prakriti. And now chapter fourteen, avya bhichare na bhakti yoga na sevate maam. With no other thought, with unswervering devotion, serve me. Thank you, Harion. We'll do Purna Mata and then we'll do Bhagavad uh, Gita. Okay. Om Asatu Ma Sadgamaya Tamasuma Chutir Gamaya Mrityur Ma Amritam Gamaya Om Purna Mata Purna Midam Purna Purna Mudachyate. पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्य शांति 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 हरि ओ श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओ ओम जय भगवदगीते मैया जय भगवदगीते हरि कमल विहारे हरि कमल विहारे सुंदर सुपनीते ओम जय भगवदगीते कर्म सुमर्म प्रकाशिनी काम सत्य हरा मैया काम सत्य हरा तत्व ज्ञान विकाशिनी तत्व ज्ञान विकाशिनी विद्या ब्रह्म परा ओम जय भगवदगीते निश्चल भक्ति विदाहिनी निर्मल मलहारी मैया निर्मल मलहारी शरण रहस्य प्रदायी शरण रहस्य प्रदायी सब विधि सुखकारी ओम जय भगवदगीते राग द्वेश विधारिणी 
तारिणी मोद सदा मैया तारिणी मोद सदा भव भय हारिणी तारिणी भव भय हारिणी तारिणी परमानंद पदा ओम जय भगवदीते आसुर भाव विनाशिनी नाशिनी तम रजनी भैया नाशिनी तम रजनी दैवी सदगुण दायिनी दैवी सदगुण दायिनी हरि रसिका सजनी ओम जय भगवदीते समता त्याग सिखावनी हर मुख की भानी मैया हर मुख की भानी सकल शास्त्र की स्वामिनी सकल शास्त्र की स्वामिनी श्रुतियों की रानी ओम जय भगवदीते दया सुधा भर सावनी मातु कृपा की जय मैया मातु कृपा की जय हरि पद प्रेम दान कर हरि पद प्रेम दान कर अपनो कर ली जय ओम जय भगवत गीते ओम जय भगवत गीते मैया जय भगवत गीते हरि ही कमल विहारी हरि ही कमल विहारी सुंदर सुपनीते ओम जय भगवत गीते ओम जय भगवत गीते ओम जय भगवत गीते हरि ओम थैंक यू एनी थॉट्स कमेंट्स और क्वेश्चंस आई हैव ऑल थ्रू द सेशन आई हैव अंडरस्टूड व्हाट्स बीन टोल्ड बट ऑल थ्रू द सेशन समथिंग दैट आई वाज थिंकिंग अबाउट एंड होपफुली फ्रेम्ड इट इन अ वे दैट आई मेक माय सेल्फ क्लियर सो द कॉन्टेक्स्ट दैट आई एम गोइंग टू शेयर आई नीड अ बिट ऑफ अ क्लेरिफिकेशन हियर and just standing up for one self or fighting for one self would that become rajasik and uh, the confusion here is so if i continue to think that all the disrespect and all the disregard is not for me it's for a physical being but not me uh, in spirit or however that is called and i uh, don't act on it would that be too much uh, as in would that uh, the primary thing would be uh, defending myself isn't it the primary what was the last sentence primary thing would be what yourself my job I mean, as a primary no. thing for myself would i need to stand up for myself or defend myself so if i'm thinking all that is been told or done ha huh. so see for the first part first part of your question um, after for 15 16 17 18 after four more chapters after bhagavad gita is over arjuna will be standing up and fighting for himself <laughs> so your first part was you know if you fight for yourself right but he will not be fighting for himself right that that aspect of i is gone so see all of this why, why are we going through all of this fundamentally we are going through all of this to get that ultimate peace within to discover that ultimate peace within see whatever we do we have discovered that whether we do uh, tamasic activity rajasic activity or sattvic activity we have seen and we have seen for generations before us and we have seen the universe and the world the human world the way it is today it's not as if that that peace has been realized right there are only specific human beings that seem to have realized that ultimate peace that ultimate um, um, you know the the uh, the moksha the liberation that that happiness that comes from this aspect of being liberated right and that happiness that comes from this aspect of being liberated is nothing but this non identification with the gunas that is what bhagwan has taught us in this chapter 
so doing what you have to do whether it is standing up and fighting for yourself whether it is you know not fighting for yourself whatever it may be what appears appropriate at that point in time or what is obviously appropriate at that point in time with the detachment towards the particular action not thinking i am doing this not thinking i am doing this for this you know sarvarambha parityagi for this goal that i want to achieve this is why i am doing this when you are able to perform action without having those identifications that is when you are obviously a gunatita and the actions automatically will become right well we may not be there as individuals i certainly cannot claim to be there as individuals but what i can definitely claim is that as i am getting more and more knowledgeable about these aspects i am able to clearly recognize what my gunas are number one not only that i am also able to recognize what guna i am going through at this point in time more often than not and knowing that i am able to choose how i want to behave how i want to conduct and sometimes when i conduct in a particular manner which i would not have liked to conduct i realize that much faster than i was able to realize uh, you know earlier in my life and all of this is only helping me feel happier feel more contented with the reality of our existence and is that not the goal of what all our goals anyway is that is why we are even studying bhagavad gita right so that is the goal of the, the that we are pursuing of course we are pursuing with a selfish purpose by the way but the time will come when that selfish purpose will also drop i am not too anxious about it right now just the fact that i am able to live life moment to moment to moment from moment to moment being aware that is good enough and being able to take action with that awareness that does definitely feel you know that that progress is being made one and two you feel more that contentment better contentment sense of content more sure of who you are so that is what is the best way i can answer your question <laughs> so okay if i let's say i, I have really uh, displayed a certain behavior and i'm i'm not really uh, i don't like it but then impulsively i've done something and i'm able to realize that uh, would that realization count for something or would that uh, only um, i'm sorry only realization would count or along with realization i think i'm answering my own question <laughs> along with the realization the next um, the next action or would, what would i do when it happens next would also make a lot of difference or not repeating in other words yeah both would both of them would and like you said you were answering your own question and that is what it is right you when we when we kind of take the pursuit in this direction these answers come to ourselves in our context also because one there is a general context uh, bhagwan has done a fantastic job you know shri krishna has done such an amazing job of giving the best context of a war you know that's why um, it makes so much sense that is why when you go through somebody you know like a dr victor frankl's life it makes a lot more sense because those are extremely difficult situations that a person finds himself or herself in the situation that arjuna found himself in was unbelievably difficult so if we can make context out of that situation it is easier to make context out of our day to day situations and that is why it becomes very customized you know this kind of a pursuit is so customized that we are able to make meaning out of millions countless people not millions countless people have made sense and made meaning out of the teachings of bhagavad gita in their individual context i can never put myself in your context and neither can you right but it makes sense to each one of us individually in our context so that is why you know this is it's worth it's well worth it and that is why you know everybody sometime or the other comes on this path you know once once you know you are done with because if if life is tamasic or rajasic or you know if tha- life is tamasic or rajasic it is for a number of years decades 
and after at some point in time every individual human being kind of wants something else and that is when they start start seeking sattvic and when they pursue sattvic they start understanding you know what is beyond sattvic thank you so yeah both both the realization and the subsequent action based on that realization both are valid any other thought or comment okay if there's nothing else then um, we can meet next next saturday with a new chapter thank you all hari om <laughs>